Now we're looking at the evaporation uh, tool, the chamber, and the pumps, and the filaments. So they're putting the, the solid material to be evaporated inside the filament here. Yes. Yes, I'm not sure how good you can see that, but so we, <laughs> we took uh, we took a pump that we have here, a pump that I actually use for demonstrations for recruiting with students. That's closed. And so it, in talking, one of our instructors was talking with somebody at a meeting or a conference, and they said that they, would, they used to do this type of evaporation. So we went and we started to source out. Um, the person that they talked to gave us some information to work with and start with. So I sourced out some feed screws and, and we found uh, a tungsten wire and some aluminum clips. And here we go. So we purchased, we basically have a vacuum pump, we have a chamber, we have a gauge, we have a valve between the chamber and the pump. We put at the bottom, we had a meter. So you can see the, the gauge on the right hand side that is showing in terms of tors the pressure reading. So they're pumping down the chamber. So it's now around three tors, right? Yep, tors correct. Now. Yep. Remember the outside pressure is 760 tors on the average. So they pump it down uh, 760 times right now. Yeah, downward. now we're down in the millitors. So what we have here is we have a, uh, we have the pump, the chamber, and our gauge, and our tungsten wire, and our feed-throughs. Connected to our feed-throughs, we have a transformer, a transformer that's basically putting out 3.6 volts at 40 amps. And then we have, in line with that, a variac. So now we can take incoming 120 volts, start at zero, work our way up, and then apply that to the transformer, which then applies it to our electrodes or our feed throughs, and then heats up our wire, creating a whole bunch of current, and then vaporizing our aluminum. So right now we're at uh, 55 millitor, about we're getting there. So Rich is uh, now showing you probably the cheapest, one of the cheapest ways of doing it. Still a good cleaning type of deposition, like the nanoscale. Yeah, where were we before, Osgur? Do you remember <laughs> that day we did it? Yeah, we were like around 30 probably, but I think you, can, you might still do it now too. But we're we going to give it a try. Or is it? Okay. Now we're talking about the pressure range to start the deposition. So now it's 45. It's mostly 45 millitors. They're exhausting the particles inside by using the the uh, pumps. So they're uh, getting rid of all the other like oxygen, all the nitrogen, all those things that are inside the chamber that will uh, not allow the deposition or evaporation to start. Now here's the one thing that I've never done before and it's using a wire, a tungsten wire that we have used once already. So now it's starting to glow. Now they're applying the current and that's being dissipated into heat. And yeah, you guys start the position. The chamber walls are getting covered now with aluminum and it's getting reflective so it will not be transmitted again it's not now we're seeing a rich face for the first time <laughs> okay turn down yeah thank you this was awesome now the, the result is we see scott and rich together just like a mirror aluminum starts reflecting back i did have a. I did have a uh piece of glass in there with some tape on it so we can take mm -hmm. it out real quick here and hopefully sure, sure. 30 seconds right sure sure they are now venting the chamber you guys can see that the pressure is increasing rapidly and we're very close to 760 tours so they vented almost yeah they can now open the chamber it's nice and shiny now i have to clean it that's the only drawback <laughs> 
Yeah. All that aluminum is covering now at the nanoscale. Like there is probably 100, 200 nanometers of aluminum on the walls of the chamber right now. Yeah, so Bill is asking, is this process much different than sputter coating? Yes and no. So uh, th this is still not relying on chemistry, but transfer, uh, uh, mass transfer of aluminum, like you can see from the filament, the tungsten filament onto the glass that Rich put inside. But still, while having said that, remember that evaporation is taking place thanks to the uh, current that we flow through the filament and heating up the filament instead of using a plasma. So plasma uh, would be acquired inside a, a chamber like that to uh, ionize the gas. So uh, uh, we would basically uh, making use of different physics in that case. So we would um, still could work at around the same pressure range, like 30 millitor would still work. Uh, but we would have to use plasma and we would have to feed the inside with another gas like argon. Argon uh, would have to be fed inside. Now, Rich didn't need to feed inside with another gas. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rich. Yes, that was a great, awesome demonstration. Uh, yep. There's our, uh, our homemade thermal evaporator and all in all, I'd say it probably costs less than $5,000. Yeah, what more do you want? Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> That's a lot, less, a, yeah. a lot less than the one we have in the, in the clean room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>